Welcome everybody, happy Pentecost Sunday. I am so glad that we are together. So happy that we're together. Uh, let's stay together. We can all agree that together is great. Breakups are not so great. Sometimes breakups are great, but when you break up, usually you call somebody that you love and because you don't want to be in that situation alone. Like, so you always go back to some, being with someone that you love. You're like, hey, I need you with me in this season because I'm not feeling so great. Uh, but uh, breakups are not the best. Being together is great. Uh, usually, yeah, be, being with people you love is amazing. Alone is not so amazing. Sometimes alone is okay for like a few hours uh, when the kids are running around and you just need to get some alone time. But you can't live your life alone. We need people. It's good to be together. Because of Israel throughout its history being beaten and taken to captivity and beaten and taken into captivity and beaten and scattered and beaten and I mean they've just been scattered over and over again. In fact during its history Jerusalem has been destroyed twice, besieged 52 to- 23 times, attacked 52 times and captured and recaptured 44 times. And because of this Israel, the Jews are all over the place and of course we know even right now there's another war fighting for that land. But God said he would gather his people once again because his people together is important to him. You'll see a bunch of verses in the background. Isaiah 11 talks about uh, he will raise a banner for the nations and gather the exiles of Israel. And he will assemble uh, the scattered people of Judah. Jeremiah 23, I will gather the remnant of my flock. Jeremiah 31, he who scattered Israel will gather them. Ezekiel 36, for I will take you out of the nations. I will gather you from all the countries and bring you back into your own land. He said he's going to gather his scattered people. It's almost like you can see a picture of a farmer who scatters the seeds and the seeds go in the ground and they die and they produce fruit. And then that same father, then get farmer, then gathers uh, them together and it's to bless other people. He, He wants his people together. He doesn't want his people scattered. He wants his people gathered. He doesn't want his people off on their own. Uh, Just look at the parable of the lost sheep. When the lost sheep went away, he went out of his way to gather that sheep to bring him back so that he could be with the others. Why? Because there's safety in numbers. He wants everyone together. It's safer that way. It's offensive. It's defensive. Ecclesiastes 4, the one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves, but a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Ecclesia, Iglesia, church. It means assembly, gathering, unity, community, in agreement, togetherness, meeting, congregation, fellowship. It's so important to God. And you know, every church has a fellowship hall, which usually meant the room that we'd all go to get snacks in. But it's more than, hey, go to that room to get snacks together. It's more than invite me over to your house for dinner. It's let's do life together. Let's walk this journey together. Let's let's like live together. Let, let's do everything together. Right, and right after the Holy Spirit comes and fills everyone, which we're about to get into, it's Pentecost Sunday. And listen to what it says. Acts 2, 42 says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship to the breaking of bread into prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And I love this. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being Saved, which can't happen if we're not doing something literally daily, every day, and together. We were made for each other. We were made for each other. Stop with the all by myself. Gathering of people have been an important, life-changing staple since he brought Adam and Eve together. It wasn't good for man to be 
Hebrews 10 warns us in not giving up meeting together. It's strength in numbers. One of the worst things about COVID besides the health threat was the lack of gathering. And not just for the church, but with family and friends and school. It was socially, relationally, mentally, emotionally. When in prison, if they want to break you, they put you in solitary confinement. I, I watch a lot of Animal Channel, like I, I do like a lot of like on the, the Instagram reels, like I, everything's animals. It's all like lions killing other things. And my kids think I'm weird because I just love watching animals kill animals. Psycho. No. Um, I, I love watching it. And you just notice that that lion will always go after the one that's off by himself. A lion will never rush into a herd of buffalo. He will never dare go for a bunch of animals together. They will always go. Why? Because you're weakest when you're by yourself. There is power in the gather. And if that's true, why would I ever miss it? There is power in the gather. And if that's true, why would I ever be off on my own? Acts chapter 1, we're going to get into Pentecost right now, and this is Luke talking, uh, and it, he says in my former book, talking about the gospel of Luke, he's talking to Theophilus, he says, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. We're about to get there. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift of my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it's not for you to know the time or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky and he was going when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will, will come back in the same way you have, been seen, you have seen him go into heaven. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives. A Sabbath day walked from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room, the upper room, where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. Pretty much all the 11 disciples, Midas, Judas Iscariot, who was the traitor. And verse 14 says, they all joined together together constantly in prayer along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. And then right into Acts 2, says, when the day of Pentecost came, that means, that means from the 40 days where Jesus ascended into heaven, he said to wait, they went in the upper room 10 days later, 10 days later, uh, so uh, they were all together in one place. They were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven, filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Then they gathered. Then they gathered. We start here. They're standing on the Mount of Olives. Now, the Mount of Olives has a lot of significance. In 2 Samuel chapter 15, uh, David uh, was defeated and came here and he wept here. Uh, John chapter 11, Jesus wept here. Jesus also taught several uh, times on this mountain. One of them called the Olivet Discourse, where he talks about the well done and good and faithful servant, and where he talks about the wise virgins and those waiting for the master to come back. Uh, Lazarus, Martha, and Mary lived right here and that's where Lazarus would have been raised from the dead the donkey where where which which he rode in on on the triumphal em entry would have came from this very region the garden of Gethsemane is here where he goes to pray and he actually gets betrayed uh, and the Roman soldiers arrest him and, and now Jesus ascends into heaven from this very spot 
According to the prophet Zechariah, Jesus will return not only in the same way, but to the same place. In the prophecy related to end times, in this chapter 14, it says, on that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, east of Jerusalem, and the Mount of Olives will be split in two from east to west, forming a great valley with half the mountain moving north and half the mountain moving south. The very location where David wept in defeat and where Jesus was betrayed and rejected will be the very place where Jesus returns in triumph over all his enemies. That's some good news. So, in this place, in this place, Jesus tells them, don't leave, don't leave the city, wait for the Holy Spirit, because you're about to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered. Remember, Jesus had died 40 days ago. The disciples didn't gather then. They actually scattered. At the cross, they didn't gather, they scattered. They ran for their lives, they were scared, and they bounced. Doors locked, windows locked, hiding. And now they regroup, and Jesus says, don't go anywhere, wait for the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered. Who gathered? It wasn't the big conference speakers, it wasn't the prophets, it wasn't the, the religious elite, it wasn't the, 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 the social upper echelon of the people. It was a bunch of mess ups. It was the disciples, unlearned, dirty, stinky fishermen, potty mouth cursing, cutting ears off, retreating group of nobodies. And I love this because it gives me hope. Look at the grace of God. It's like, welcome back, boys. You bunch of knuckleheads. We got some awesome things to continue to do. Then they gathered. Don't go anywhere. Wait. They gather. It's like they huddle up and they got some questions and Jesus is like, wait, they got some questions about time. And he goes, we're not going to talk about time. You're going to wait. You're going to wait. You're going to wait here and you're going to wait together. For what? For the Holy Spirit. For what? He's about to come and baptize you with fire. For what? Because you need this power to do what I've called you to do. Now stop saying for what? Now listen, it is easy. It is easy to gather after you see the revival, after you see the move of God, after you see the fire, after you see the miracles. Oh, it's easy to gather then. So many people, they hear about a revival like Azusa revival or Asbury revival and they hear about it and they go, oh, let's get on a bus or let's take a road trip and let's go down because I want to see what's happening. You hear about something already happening and so you go join that thing. This is very different. This is before the move. This is before the fire. Oh, to be part of the birth of something Holy Spirit. To gather in expectancy that God will do something historical. But it's not about showing up to, to something that already is. It's, it's gathering to pray about something that could be. Then they gathered, not after the Holy Spirit came. They heard Jesus and they obeyed. They were waiting on a promise from God. They gathered together to wait. Verse 14 again. They all joined together constantly, 10 days long, in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. Then they gathered 120 of them. Acts chapter 2 says they were all together in one place. That sounds redundant. If they were all together, obviously, they would have been in one place. False. You could be in the same place, but not together. You could be in the same place, but not together. Not in the same spirit. Proximity and unity are very different. It's like people in a restaurant. It's like a married couple living like roommates. You could be in the same place and not together. Unity mattered. Vision, mission, expectancy is what mattered here. They were all together and in the same place for 10 days. And they didn't know what was coming. They didn't know what it would look like. They didn't know how everything was going to work out. They didn't even know how long it was going to take. Could you imagine day one goes by and day two goes by and then a week goes by and day eight, day nine, day ten. They're like, what is this? They, they, they're just waiting. They're just waiting in expectancy. Because Jesus told them to. And then the Holy Spirit fills the whole room. But was it the room? or they that gathered. Had they not gathered, the Holy Spirit doesn't fill that room. See, it's not a building he wants to fill. It's me he wants to fill. It's you he wants to fill. It's us he wants to fill. It's our hearts. It's our lives. That's all he's ever wanted. It's not about four walls. It's us gathering in the four walls. And when I'm filled, it affects the whole house. 
Remember the story in the Bible where the woman breaks the, the jar of perfume and the fragrance fills the whole house and it goes under every crevice and crack and goes underneath the, the, the stove and into the cupboards. I mean, it fills the whole house, but it wasn't for the house. It was for the people in the house. And then it affects the whole house. It fills me and it spills onto them. Then they gathered and they all get filled with the Holy Spirit. Tongues of fire come down and separate and rest on each of their heads. Could you imagine that? Like what is going on? Like a scene out of Stranger Things. Like, like tongues, tongues of, could you imagine a tongue on fire coming at your head? You'd want to swat it away. It's about to burn you. You could like have all these things, like maybe it would startle you. You're like, what is happening? No, no, no. They were expectant. They knew God was doing something in the room. They knew it was God. They were ready for it. They were like, God, whatever you, this may look weird. This may look crazy. God, if it's you, I want it. 120 in attendance. Guess how many tongues of fire there were? 120. It says tongues of fire separated and rested on each of them. Each of them. Because they gathered together, they get filled together. And at this very moment, Jews from all over the world had gathered in Jerusalem for the Feast of Weeks, one of the big, uh, big temple feasts. And all these uh, gathered Jews are walking by, right? Because it was, it was uh, customary for certain feasts. Everybody had to get back to Jerusalem. Everyone had to gather back in the, home, in the hometown. And so they're all in town at the temple for the feast. And so now these gathered Jews all of a sudden start hearing all this weirdness. They, they're like, how are these? There, there's some people that started day drinking and they must be drunk up there. They must be throwing a party and what's happening. But, but it's so weird because they're all talking in languages that are not their languages. They're, they're from all over the world. And how is this possible? So now these gathered Jews that were in Jerusalem start gathering around the upper room thinking the disciples were drunk, thinking they were crazy, but the Holy Spirit had fallen on the disciples and it filled all of them and it changed everything. And now this scared old lot of them go downstairs together and spill into the street. Regular people together, filled with the Holy Spirit, spilled into the street. Not technically trained, but we act like the Holy Spirit needs our degree. If he calls you, he equips you. You just need to say yes, go outside and open up your mouth. Filled with the Holy Spirit, and it changes everything. They were scared, now they're not. They were hiding, now they're seeking. They were empty, now they're filled. They were quiet, now they're talking, and it overflows and affects everything around them. Man, I I wanna, I, I want them to be like, do it again, do it again. I want them to be like, God, would you do it again? And if you came like tongues of fire, and you did. You can again, and if you fill them up, I don't know, and you did, you will again, and again, and again, and again, and again. He wants to do it again. He wants to do it again. He will do it again. He can do it again. He can fill us all with the same spirit. He wants to do it again. Filled so that we can spill. Filled so that we can overflow. And it, I want it to affect everyone around us. It, it affects uh, the circumstances and the atmosphere and the environment and the news in my life. Filled and spilled. Uh, I've said this before. If you take toothpaste and you squeeze it, what, what comes out? Why? Because it's filled with toothpaste. Guys, in life, we're going to get squeezed, we're going to get pressed. Whatever you're filled with is going to come out. Be careful what you're filling yourself with. I don't want to damage the environment around me. 
I want the environment around me to be filled with the Holy Spirit when I overflow, when I'm squeezed, when I'm pressed, when the enemy comes at me, when I get bad news, when I don't get the answer I was hoping for, when everything around me looks like it's crashing down on me, when, when, when I don't have the strength left and I feel weak. It's okay because it's not by might and it's not by power, but it's by... So God, would you fill me so that it would fill and spill into whatever I'm doing. It would spill into my day. It would spill into my marriage. It would spill into my relationships. It would spill into my kids. It would spill into my finances. It would spill into my decisions and my business and my thoughts and my conversation and my attitude and my outlook on life and my witnessing for you and my reaching people and my growing believers. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, preaches his first sermon with boldness, not caring who hears them and 3,000 people get saved. Not because Peter's message was so clever with three points and a cool title, but because the people heard them all speaking in tongues. They see the evidence of the Holy Spirit and they hear Peter's words that were bathed and anointed in the Holy Spirit and revival filled and spilled and affected everyone that gathered. Now, most Christians, they want to stay in the upper room. It, it's, it's safe where, where the presence is. It's nice in here. It's cozy in here. I'm, I'm with my friends nestled by the fire. Yes, yes. But see, not one person got saved in the upper room. Not one person gets rescued from hell in the upper room. We need the upper room, but people need us in the streets. We grow in the upper room, but other people don't. We're, we're safe in the other room, but upper room, but other people aren't. Yes. If they had stayed in the upper room together... The church stays 120 people. But because they spill into the streets together, the church grows 300 percent. 3,000 people get saved. The upper room is nice. We need it. Let's gather together. Let's do community groups together. As for me and my household, make an upper room in your house, at a coffee shop, wherever. Oh, but let the Holy Spirit fill us and spill us and move us together. And we hit the streets together and we reach people together and we grow believers together. Because together we are better. See, this is what happens when we gather. This is what happens when we get together. Great things happen when we get together, hashtag Pentecost. Then they gathered. And the Holy Spirit shows up. His presence fills the room and dwells with them. It reminds me of the verse, Matthew chapter 18. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. God is like, yo, I just need for two or three of you. I just need a Paul and Silas in prison uh, together, agreeing together in praise, and the ground will shake, and some doors will open, and some chains will loose. I I just need a Moses and Aaron to stand up and declare freedom. Let my people go. And every single person is set free. Oh, I just need a Peter and a John to walk together, to church together, and agree. And some people are going to get healed along the way. Oh, I just need a good Samaritan and a hotel owner to team up and take care of some broken people. Oh, I just need some men and some women to start believing. And I will give them dreams and visions, and they'll start to prophesy. Oh, I just need a Michael and a Maria to say yes. Church and 39 years later, look what happens. Oh, I just need some a husband and a wife to get together and call heaven down over their church. I just need some young people to gather together on a Friday and be like, God, you need to save the next generation. I just need a me and a you to get together and start calling down heaven and saying, Fill me, Jesus, fill me, Holy Spirit. We got some work to do. God, I'm not leaving where I'm at. I'm waiting for you. Come on. 